is 471. Gather us in. 471. Please stand. <laughs> crowded, more crowded with the promise of snow tomorrow. <laughs> but I guess now we have that option of just not going, so. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to the people of the good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, my Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, and have your sins. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have your sins. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You will love the most high Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Jeremiah. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, the salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes, that the sleeve stays green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how could some among you say there's no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is in vain. You are still in your sins. That those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. For if this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. According to Luke. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes toward his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who now who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude and insult you, and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, the reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in their sway. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Many of us are familiar with the story of King Midas. He was a wealthy king, but a very greedy one, and when he is given a wish, his wish is that whatever he touches would turn to gold. Immediately he touches a table and it turns to solid gold, and then he touches something else and also solid gold, then he reaches for a grape to eat, and that too turns into solid gold. Eventually he hugs his own daughter, and she also turns into solid gold. <coughs> So as a result, he is allowed to let that wish be undone, and then everything he had once touched, again, becomes as it was. The reason I say that is because, in terms of this gospel today, which is different from Matthew's, Matthew's is just the eight Beatitudes, where here we have these four Beatitudes and four woes. Matthew's gospel is all about really spiritual things, whereas this is pretty much about physical things. If we are hungry now, well, we'll be full later. If we are poor now, we'll be rich later. Things like that. So we have to put it in perspective. First of all, we have to remember who Luke is writing to. He is writing to the poorest of the poor. He's writing to those who are on the fringe of society, and he's trying to give them hope. But for us here, we might wonder, what does that mean for us? For certainly, we are not among the poorest of the poor. And, in fact, for the most part, compared to the world, we're fairly well off. So does that mean we will have all those woes in the time to come? But there's another story, maybe less familiar. It's about a man who is out fishing, and he catches this large fish. But the fish tells him that he's a magic fish, 
And if he throws it back, he'll give him three wishes. The man is a very good man and does throw him back. But he kind of forgets when he gets home. And as he's given his plate of food, which is pretty simple, he inadvertently wishes for sausage. And sausage will magically appear on his plate. He then remembers what the fish said, and he tells his wife. But now his wife is angry because he wasted a wish. Wasted a wish. And in her anger, she says, I wish those sausages would be part of your nose. <laughs> now they're attached. And there's only one wish left. And of course, that wish was to remove the sausages. So they're back to the way they were. You see, if you think of those two stories, it really doesn't matter how wealthy we are. It doesn't matter how poor we are. What matters is what our attitudes are and how we view everything we do have, no matter how little. Here was a poor wife and his and fisherman husband, but instead of recognizing that those wishes could have been used for good, they used them just for their own personal gratification. So that no matter what we do have, how little or how much, it's what we decide to do with it that makes a difference. And that is what really Luke is trying to remind us to. You see, some of us may be wealthy, but we may be wealthy because we use all the gifts and talents that God has given us, and we use them to maybe get educated, maybe to learn about what it is we needed to do as a trade, or whatever else. And maybe we were very diligent and very hardworking, and that's how we made the money we have. But those who are poor, maybe some of them had the same gifts, but they wasted them because they were too angry for whatever reason. And instead of using them to better themselves, Instead, they wasted them. And we know we have many stories in the gospel about that, about the talents. Those who are even too afraid to maybe use the gifts that they had, they wasted those gifts completely. So it isn't about what we have or what we don't have, but how we use whatever God has given us, and for the good of all. So that if we are well off, then we use that to help others. If we're not so well off, we can still do much to help others, just by being polite by maybe holding a door for someone, by maybe picking up some garbage that you see on the street, provided you have gloves on now, it's not safe to do anything without gloves. But there are many ways to show thanks to God for what God has given us. And even those who don't have much still have probably a lot more than many people in other parts of the world. So it's not so much about what we have and what we don't have. But Luke is trying to drive home this, this point. And it is a problem if we think that everything we have is our own doing. If we get that God is always the giver of all gifts, the giver of our talents that allows us to do what we can with them for the betterment of ourselves and to then help others, but also the squandering of those gifts, so that instead of bettering ourselves, we just expect others to take care of us, and instead become maybe even bitter or angry when they don't do what we ask them to do however many times they may ask. It becomes an issue for each of us to decide how it is that we are going to use what God has given us as best we can for the good of all. Now, you may know that every now and then there are techniques for trying to raise money. Probably you've gotten many calls about asking for donations here and there. Well, churches also do the same thing. And this one particular person was in charge of trying to raise money for his church. So he called somebody who was on his list, and he started by saying, our research has indicated that you have the means to make a very, very handsome donation to our church. And at that point, the man cut him off and said, well, has your research also told you that I have an aged mother in an assisted living home that costs $3,000 a month? And has your research told you that I have an alcoholic brother who uses all of his money on liquor and his wife and children have nothing? And does your research tell you that I have a son who was injured in an accident and is now on disability? And what makes you think I'm going to give anything to you when I haven't given anything to them? <laughs> That's what Luke's talking about. <laughs> Woe to those people who do have but only keep it for themselves. There's nothing inherently wrong or bad about being rich. There's nothing inherently good about being poor. Whatever it is we have, whatever it is we do with it, is what makes the difference. And the more we can give to others, the better. But also, even if we don't have much, we can still make a difference. 
It's not just about treasure. It is about time and talent too. And maybe somebody, I actually saw this, maybe you saw the person who was homeless and playing the piano. Did you see that one? Some of you have. Well, apparently someone heard him and hopefully when his life is now turned around, he'll do whatever good he can with the money he'll now make. And that's what becomes the question. What will we do with what we have, no matter how little, no matter how much? Will we keep it all for ourselves, or will we be willing to share with others? Not to make others maybe dependent upon us, but at least to know that there is hope. Because that's what Luke wanted to instill in this community of his, hope. And of course, the ultimate hope is in the next world. So no matter what we have, little or much, hopefully, with doing the best we can with it, for the betterment of all of God's kingdom, we'll have nothing to fear when we leave this world. And rather than having us be woeful of the next world, we will leap for joy, knowing that God has saved us. The question is up to us to do, answer God in however way we can, by doing as much as we can with whatever we have. Now, one of the uh, priest friends of mine once said that probably the best thing we could ever do is to give away as much as we can while we're alive, but without anyone else knowing it. And that probably is the greatest thing we can do. It's a challenge, though, for all of us, and it's something that we have to remember. Ultimately, God will judge us in the end, and hopefully each of us will be found worthy, because we did the best we could with whatever it was we had or whatever little we may have had. Responses, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who seek to live according to the Beatitudes, that by our prayer for one another we may find courage and wisdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord for leaders in God's church, that our Holy Father and his brother bishops may show in their lives the simplicity of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord for our fellow citizens, that we may be protected from the temptations of affluence, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the poor of us, that we may never be blind to their need, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all the sick, especially Kathy Rock, Michael Helfen, Jim Havern, Josephine McGovern, and Mercedes Rehal, that they may find healing and knowledge that they are loved by God, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the faithfully departed, that they may rest in peace and rise in glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, for the attention in our prayer attention books and the prayers we keep deep in our hearts and for Rivaldi, 
Edward Lopez, Rosemary Ennis, Aida Martin Salazar, Delgado, Christine Edward, and in honor of the Blessed Mother, we pray for whom this mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, your Son teaches us to set our hearts on what matters for eternal life. May we follow in his way, and may our prayers help all who stand in need of your care. We ask these things in his name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. In this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity 
and even fashion for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Mm -hmm. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teaching we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Yes, Let us offer each other the sign of peace. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am my worthy, and you say my word. And also say the word, and hold the Seven five nine, blessed are they. Seven five nine.
Let us pray. <coughs> Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As always, please take home a parish bulletin to keep up, keep up with the things here in our parish, the diocese, and our local community. And maybe take one or two for your neighbors just in case. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Amen. Now, mighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Yes, God. Our recessional hymn 662 Love Divine, O Love's Excellent. 662.